This is the continuation of our previous video on planes where we left off last time. We were looking at an example where we knew that if we have two non-parallel planes that they will intersect in a line and we were trying to find the vector equation or a vector equation of the line of intersection. So let's do a quick review. How did we start? We assumed that it crossed the xy plane we set z equal to 0. When z equals to 0 in our equations for the plane, that will give us a system of equations then uh, which have no z value, uh, just x and y. We could solve that, and we found a point on both planes, which must be a point on the line of intersection. We made a note that even if it didn't intersect the xy plane, we have a workaround. We could make an assumption that it, it intersects the xz plane and set y equal to 0, or assume that it intersects the yz plane and set x equal to 0. And we will find a point on both lines. And then we said, well, we can write our vector equation of the line as our initial vector plus t times the direction vector, which we don't know. So we're going to assume it has components a, b, and c. And we could look at the parametric equations and say that, well, we don't need to have t as just a, uh, a variable. We could choose a non-zero value for t, like t equals 1. And then it's actually even easier. If I go ahead and take those values for x, y, and z, so the expressions, put them into the first equation, and remove the parentheses, collect like terms, I'm going to find that I have a 40 minus 36 on the left-hand side, which equals 4, and I also have 4 on the right-hand side. So the constants equal to each other, and I can subtract 4 from each side and get 0 on the right-hand side, and no constants, of course, on the left-hand side. And if we think about it, that should make perfect sense, because where did these numbers you know, 20, 36, and then there's a 0 here that we didn't write. It came from the fact that we had a point 20, 36, 0, which is on the plane. It's on both planes. And so it must satisfy the equation of the first plane and also the equation of the second plane. In other words, 2 times 20 minus 36 plus 3 times 0 must equal 4, because that point is a point on the plane. So it must satisfy the equation of the plane. So that point will also satisfy the equation of the second plane. So I know that I don't have to worry about the 20 and the 36. I know that I'm just going to get a negative 3. A, I'm sorry, I'm putting A in the place of X, B in the place of Y, and C in the place of Z, and making the right-hand side 0. So now I have two with A, B, and C. Now, I only have two equations, but I have three unknowns. So there's really going to be infinitely many solutions. But that makes sense, because we're trying to find the, a direction vector for the line. Well, there's infinitely many possible direction vectors. Uh, so uh, it makes sense that our system of equations should have an infinite number of solutions. So to find a solution, and that's all we need, we just need one solution, we're going to uh, assume that we can set c equal to 1 and solve the resulting 2 by 2 system. And maybe it's worthwhile to uh, explain what I'm talking about. Uh, why can I make that assumption? Well, if I have a direction vector, so really what I'm assuming is C 
is not equal to zero. Because if c is not equal to zero, I could get another direction vector. And let me just call this v prime is another direction vector. And it's going to be take the direction v, direction vector v, and multiply it by 1 over c, which would be a over c, b over c, 1. So as long as the third component of my direction vector is non-zero, I could just go ahead and assume that the component uh, is 1. And if that turns out to be a false assumption, uh, then uh, just like we saw before, our 2 by 2 system of equations will have no solution, but we could assume that maybe b equals 1. Let's look at this first. In this case, uh, setting c equals to 1 is uh, no problem. We get a solution to this equation, or system of equations, and with a equals negative 5 and b equals negative 7. And so our direction vector can be taken as negative 5, negative 7, and 1. So again, we set c equal to 1. Um, it's possible that that's a bad assumption, that we can't do that if we got a no solution to that uh, system of equation. So what we would do, we would try setting b equals to 1 and to see if we get a solution. And if that still doesn't work, then uh, we should be able to set a equals to 1 and solve the new 2 by 2 system. At least one of those has to have a solution because this is equivalent, setting c equal to 1 is equivalent to assuming c does not equal 0. Setting b equal to 1 is equivalent to saying b does not equal to 0 and setting a equal to 1 is equivalent to saying a cannot equal 0. So not all of these three could be 0. So at least one of them has to be non-zero. So one of those 2 by 2 systems will have a unique solution. Alright, so we now have a vector equation for the line of intersection. So I hope you found these two videos on planes useful, and we'll be referring to planes throughout the course.